This is my fucking dream, y'all. All this shit. Look at my shit. I got, I got shorts, every fucking color. I got designer t-shirts. I got gold bullets, motherfucking vampires. I got Scarface on repeat. Best movie. Scarface on repeat. Constant, y'all. I got Escape, Calvin Klein Escape. Mix that shit up with Calvin Klein B. Smell nice. I smell nice. Ain't a fucking bed, that's a fucking art piece. It's my fucking spaceship, USS Enterprise on this shit. I go to different planets on this motherfucker. Me and my fucking Franklin's here, we take off. Take fucking it off. take off. Take it off. Look at my shit. Look at my shit. I got my blue Kool-Aid. Ooh, you got your Kool-Aid. I got my fucking nunchucks. I got shurikens. I got different flavors. I got them, I got them size. Look at that shit. I got size. I got blades. Look at my shit. This ain't nothing. I got, I got rooms of this shit. I got my dark tanning oil. Yeah. <laughs> Lay out by the pool. Yeah. Put on my dark tanning yeah. oil. Machine guns. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this motherfucker here. Look at this motherfucker. Huh? A fucking army up in this shit. This is documenting the house. Then it's being cute. No way. Okay, welcome guys to the studio tour. This has been requested for many years now and immediately you'll notice a ton of just like unopened Lego boxes. These are all kind of going to be built. This is the set for my upcoming animation, the Batman Zack Snyder prison fight scene. I'm probably gonna auction that off on my eBay at some point. Uh, this is my PC. This is where I do all the editing on the audio and kind of like picture cutting side. Duck Song, Solid Fingers. The whole studio is kind of always in flux. This is just kind of a good time to do this because I've been meaning to do it for a while and I feel like the studio is at a place that I'm actually pretty happy with and it's relatively clean right now. This is uh, just random sets and, and things. Kind of storage slash display. The Mystery Machine, Scooby. Robert Pattinson, Batman, and his Batmobile. The 89 Batman and Joker. Here are a bunch of props. These are kind of uh, things that I may need as I'm animating, and this really helps out, like, if I'm putting together a set or if I'm in the middle of a shot, I need some sort of prop or thing. It's all organized, categorized here. I kind of find that having all these characters on display helps give me ideas for upcoming animations. Kind of if I can see everything really well, it's a lot more of a creative space. Got the X-Men right here. I'm working on an X-Men short, which will be pretty funny. But yeah, I've got lots of different projects in development. Lots of uh, ideas that can be done. It's just about taking the time to implement them all. Yeah, more storage for just random buildings and stuff. Here's where I record the voices. And here's my Lego Charmander that I got from Christopher Gearhart, AKA Bricker Builds. Some more minifigures. Just good to have minifigures around, you know? You got Soviet Batman, Professor X, and some more X-Men. Then just in here, I've got like various uh, pieces of equipment and things that I, I may need. Uh, these are Legos that I sell or I'm selling on my eBay. And uh, yeah, stuff for that, like shipping packages hard drives, and then down here is like paints and other kind of messy stuff. Got a bin of markers, some gels for changing the color of lights, base plates, got my, all my guns for shooting, all my sharp objects for stabbing, and then just kind of your blunt force trauma, uh, you know, items. Here we have animals. Here we have a bunch of Lego bins, containers for the minifigures. Everything separated by hair, hats, torsos, legs. So it's much easier to put together. Uh, many, these are like whole minifigures that are from like sets or whatever um, that I might you know, need at some point. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really want to take them apart. I don't, don't want to break them down necessarily, but don't want to display them either. Uh, this is all 
this is really useful. This is all like props or kind of like set dressing for putting together scenes. And this is really useful just because like, oftentimes you'll need stuff like this, but you don't want to like build it every single time. Just to kind of fill out a space. So if there's ever kind of a unique build or something that I feel like could be repurposed down the road, I'll chuck it in here and it's, it comes in handy quite often. Outside stuff, same, same thing, just stuff for like exteriors um, to kind of fill out the, the, a city space or making it feel more um, lived in. And yeah, just saves a ton of time. Oh yeah, so I, this, is, this is all like kind of pre-put together Gothamites because I'm working on a new Batman animation. And a lot of these guys are going to be used for like the background of scenes and just kind of general extras. So you got your, your women, you got your uh, oh, hats, I guess, personal effects, hippies, gala women, street toughs, uh, businessmen, working class men, pimps, whores, mobsters, the homeless, and modern folk. And I've got modern folk because sometimes I need to do a video, you know, with, uh, that takes place kind of more in the current day or something. But with my Batman series, I try to, what I've, what I've been doing recently, I've been trying to skew more towards kind of that 1950s-esque like aesthetic where everyone's wearing hats or, you know, women are wearing hats or are wearing kind of like era appropriate attire you know you got your working class men everyone's kind of wearing a suit so it has this more of a, a retro feel to it and i want to represent that with the cars as well so you've kind of got this like uh out of time feeling some pimps and whores in there but yeah sometimes you need you do need your modern folk your homeless but yeah these are all pre-put together so i can just drop them into a scene without having to like, you know, think about it too much. So it just makes everything a lot faster. Oh yeah, right here, I've got a big old book of stickers. Whenever I make an order on Bricklink, I check the sticker section because a lot of times there's really useful stuff that can be like, you know, repurposed for other animations. So I keep it all in here and uh, it becomes really useful. Stickers are typically pretty cheap too and they, they add a lot of character to a scene. So if I'm ever building out a city scene, then I'm able to kind of quickly give the scene a lot of life and character. I think it's nice to kind of have this like grungy Gotham aesthetic where it's over commercialized and you know, like basically like any kind of city where there's just ads everywhere, it makes it more like grungy and believable. So yeah, this is like the shooting area where I shoot most of my videos. You can see it's two tabletops and they're both these like rising or standing desks. And so you can adjust the height of either one to create tiered sets or levels, which is really useful. Right now I'm setting up to shoot a scene from my upcoming Red Hood animation. We've got Batman and Robin driving the Batmobile. So that's the cockpit. So it's a pretty small set, but uh, it's oftentimes the case with, with Lego. Not every set's like a huge, big, practical, a huge, big city, but I'm getting ready to do that soon. After I shoot this scene and after I shoot another scene, I've got a big Gotham City elongated sequence of action. So there'll be lots of extras, lots of cars. I actually bought a third standing desk to go right here just to expand the Gotham City uh, skyline as much as possible and then we've got this projected backdrop here to help with that as well so you can see this Zavaba short throw projector you can put it on the ground and it projects up and I've got that hooked up to my laptop right there so I can do kind of these uh, practical set extensions so it's kind of like um, rear screen projection which is pretty sweet this uh, Light is a Huazar Science model P1NT183B. It's really, really helpful. I really like this thing a lot because it's really good at kind of just giving you a nice clean fill for your scene. It's adjustable. You can change the, the color of it. It can be any color you want. 
change the intensity of the brightness. And it stretches from one side of the table to the other. So it's just a really good kind of all around fill light. And then you use uh, these other lights like this to, to get your um, back lights or, or kind of to highlight the characters and to do sp sp uh, specialty lighting. As well as kind of in, in step practical lights, LED brick lights that plug into these USBs here. And if you ever have like a backdrop, th these shop lights are really, really bright and they're good for lighting up a big backdrop. That's why I've got all these C stands because I can either attach like flags or backdrops to them. These C stands come, come in handy often for whatever you're trying to do. So yeah, that's this. That's where pretty much all the animations happen. I've got my, my chair that I sit in. I've got my laptop. And this is the laptop. This is my main computer. This is what I use to do all the editing, like all the visual effects. I spend most of my time on this computer. And then just kind of uh, things to assist with animation. Here you've got like tools, like super glue and like cutting tools and sticky tack and pens and you know stuff like that. Whatever, you know, these are your best friend when it comes to Lego animation. Toothpicks. And, uh, yeah, gaffer's tape, of course. And then that gaffer's tape's expensive, so I try not to, I try to reuse it when, <laughs> when I can. Um, over here, this is the uh, set that will, I don't know if will ever, <laughs> ever be finished, this video. I've been working on this video kind of on and off for like almost like four years. I don't know, it's, it's been like, I think it's been a little over three years I've been working on this video on and off it's like I started it before the rise of Skywalker came out and then after that movie came out I totally I lost interest in anything Star Wars related just killed it for me so it's about like I don't know like a quarter of the way done and I put a lot of time and effort into it and I'm really proud of it but I just have no inspiration for like actually going in and finishing the scene but it's a it's a Kylo and Rey fight scene and it's it's all plotted out like I know what's going to happen it's just going to take many many more months of work to actually implement it so this set is kind of just gathering dust taking up a lot of space in the studio unfortunately but uh I will finish it eventually I'm not just going to abandon this project I just want to focus on my Red Hood video first that's more important to me then maybe I'll come back to this but uh it's still a cool set I mean it's big and there's lots of big trees and it's really immersive. I, like, I love the, the colors. The video is going to be good. It's just the you know, I'm not really interested in Star Wars stuff. Um, this is my uh, motion control rig. So you can put a camera on here and get different uh, angles and shots and program moves. And then the move will happen, will be executed frame by frame. This is a uh, Eldachrone setup. I've talked about this in the past, but uh, yeah, it's really cool and allows me to get more dynamic, more like Spielbergian type of shots. We've got more Lego storage over here. This is uh, a lot of lights, like car headlights and things. This is what I was kind of talking about earlier with the inset practical lighting. You can get these lights on eBay or there's lots of people who sell them and make them, but they're LEDs that are worked into actual bricks and then you can put them into the set. You got uh, everything you pretty much need to make a brick film <laughs> at this point. Um, I use these heads for like sorting, kind of just bulk brick that isn't sorted by anything other than color. So I'll pull these out often and dump them out onto these like blankets over here to like find the piece I need. But recently I've been investing more time in like the actual like sorting process. So over here is like colored pieces, but sorted into different groups like black two by brick or black one by brick. So it makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for fast. So a lot of time up front to put all this stuff together, but it's so much better than what it used to be because what it used to be was kind of pretty hectic and messy looking. And this is where we record the bait buffet, Mason and I's podcast. We want to start doing like a video podcast as well, like a video element. That's kind of a whole other bag of worms because you have to buy like cameras and you have to like stream the cameras and we have to have a switcher. So right now it's just audio only, but we have three mics so we can have a, a guest. 
but it's usually uh, either us or us and AJ recording. We do it every week on, it's, it's got a YouTube channel and it's on Apple and Spotify and all that. But yeah, this is also kind of where I sit to edit. Oftentimes I'll pop my laptop off of the animation station and bring it over here to chill and do visual effects. But I can also grab this entire thing and move it upstairs and sit down on my couch or outside and edit and hang out with my family while I'm working. So that's a big reason why I bought the laptop. It was like a pretty big investment. It was expensive, but it's so much better than working from like a, a kind of a space where you're locked in. And then yeah, back here, this is kind of just the chill space. We got Scooby-Doo on the wall. Sort of like our second living room. We don't have a TV in our actual living room. So this is the spot where Alyssa and I can come to watch, like actually watch movies. Got my Blu-rays on the wall over here. Got the original Lego Batcave on display right here. And uh, yeah, we don't really use this space that much though since, um, since River was born, just because he's a newborn and we like to keep everyone up upstairs. So we, I, this space has un been underutilized recently, but this is kind of the spot to go if you, want, if you really want to like have the cinematic experience. We've got the duck hanging out. He's always there. I often sleep on this couch too. Um, so yeah, just kind of some stuff on display. Another duck. Hopefully that was a pretty uh, comprehensive tour. I didn't want to spend forever making this video. I mean, I'm sure there's more things I could go into, things I could show, but uh, that's just kind of the, the basic overall setup, just to kind of maybe inspire you guys. I don't know, a lot, of, a lot of people have been asking me to do this for a long time, and I felt like today might, might be a good day to do it. Um, let's see, yeah, oh yeah, back here I should probably show you this. This is like the laundry room, but I've also got like a ton of uh, storage for Lego buildings. This is like all stuff I can use for Gotham City. Almost looks like its own Gotham City just right now, just how it is. Um, but this is what I'm talking about with like scale, like what, what I want to show in the future. In future videos, I, I want to show Gotham and it, it look like this in the animations. So that's why I've been investing so much recently into like more buildings and just kind of building out a really thick practical city without having to rely too much on visual effects. You've got a lot of like micro builds there, so you can do like forced perspective or uh, kind of wider shots of the city, but then you've got like kind of larger scale buildings. And I'm trying to go th for like more of a gothic approach. So I've also been building my own buildings like, like these with the gargoyles and, or with the angels and kind of making it seem more industrial, more gothic, more like Gotham basically. So that's what these buildings are. They're like custom made to kind of uh, move into that aesthetic. And then just buying like kind of multiple modulars so we can get really tall uh, stacking. Uh, this this building is pretty cool. It's, it's almost too big though, because like sometimes when you have buildings that are so big, it almost makes like it seems small in a way. But uh, I'll, I'll figure out a way to like use this building or incorporate it because it's pretty much like minifigure scale. It's, it's massive. But uh, yeah, I bought that from the minifig shop in Kirkwood. Um, but yeah, which, which is a store that buys and sells used brick. So yeah, a lot of the stuff I bought like used and you're able to get a better price on it that way. Over here is Lego sets that I've bought that I'm saving either to be used in the future or to sell. Most of these I'm gonna sell eventually like they'll be worth a lot of money after they retire. So I'll wait until they retire and then give it a few years for them to accumulate some value. And then I'll sell them and you know make a profit. That's the idea anyway. Uh, same with all these, there's a bunch of Legos in here. Legos volume one, two, three. And back there too, a bunch of Legos. Uh, just kind of in cold storage. So if the need arises, I can pop them out. Or if I ever you know need, need some quick money I can sell them, but yeah, I used to invest like in the stock market, but 
honestly, like, I feel like Lego is a better investment because it's, you'll make less money, but it's more of a sure thing. There's not so much up and down. Plus it's a lot more fun to buy Lego. So yeah, there's the bat cave. The thing's a bitch to move. Uh, some backdrops and things and then some other cave builds and things. And this is just like storage. So I'm just kind of under the stairs. That's where we keep Harry Potter. Um, but yeah, there's kind of uh, all, all the space is being utilized. Oh yeah, he, here's my cars. I think I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to sell a lot of these cars soon because like I said, I've been investing more into these kind of like era specific cars for Gotham because it just feels like Gotham way more if you have cars that are uh, have that 1930s or 1950s sort of vibe to them. So I've been investing a lot in like kind of like these custom cars or or cars that have that aesthetic. And I want to get rid of the cars that don't have that aesthetic. Like a lot of these cars, like I don't think I'll ever use this. It's just, it's so garish. It stands out. It looks so modern. You know, I want to give the idea that the Gotham is depressed and like most people are poor. So kind of having all these like brightly colored sports cars in the background really kind of like breaks that, that vibe and that believability. So while these cars are cool, I, just, I don't think I have any real practical use for them in the future. So I'll probably end up selling a lot of them on eBay. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any things uh, you want me to cover more of in the future, maybe, uh, I don't know. Looking forward to doing more videos in the future. Got my Red Hood video that I'm working on. So that's gonna be exciting. And uh, yeah, I'll check you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thank you.